Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. These are the spice and tea boxes that we just finished building over in the guild. The spice box features a glass lid with a quarter sawn cherry case, and the tea box features a walnut crotch case, a solid walnut crotch panel, and they both feature nine individual internal boxes for storing whatever you might have nine things of. These boxes can just be popped out really nicely and you can take them wherever you're going. The spice box also features a nice carved spoon for scooping things and dumping them into pots and whatnot. So let's get started. I had this off cup from when I built the secretary desk, which has a quarter sawn grain orientation, which will give the box a nice straight grain quarter sawn look. There's enough thickness to be resawn into two to get a half inch stock for the case and I'll be able to get the internal boxes and their bottoms from the adjacent section by resawing it into thirds. The walnut box will come from a couple pieces of crotch and another offcut I had, which will give me the lid and the pieces for the internal boxes. So before we can get going, all the stock needs to be broken down, jointed, planed, and resawn. Lots and lots of resawing. I'll start by making the cherry box. The stock for the case sat for a bit and then was machined flat and taken to final dimensions. Since I have a sequential pair of boards, I can do a green wrap around the entire box. The book match faces are turned to the outside and I roughly mark the bevel direction so I don't end up cutting something incorrectly. This design is a little bit easier to execute since the box will be square, so a stop lock is set to cut all four sides to the same length. So if we spin this bad boy around on this fancy rotary table, we can really easily take a look at all four corners of this box and we can see the continuity of the grain across all of those corners. With that out of the way, I can cut the groove for the bottom and the groove which will hold the glass. The bottom is cut to size and this one is ready for glue up. I use some tape to pull the corners together and roll it up with the bottom installed. Next I'll add some splines for decorative reinforcement. I'm cutting these first ones with a thin kerf blade so they'll be a little bit finer than a full eighth inch kerf. I don't have a flat bottom blade so for this I'll clean up the bottoms of each kerf with a chisel. I wanted to install even smaller splines surrounding the first set of splines, so I laid out cuts on either side and to a shallower depth and made those cuts with a handsaw. Next I can make the spline stock using the drum sander to slowly bring them down to their correct thickness and then chopping them up at the bandsaw. A little glue in the curves and the splines can be hammered in. The biggest thing here is just making sure they're fully seated. Now for those thin splines. Since they're so delicate, I slid them in dry and then used thin CA glue to glue them in place afterwards. After all the glue had set, they can be trimmed and sanded flush. Now I'll switch gears and start working on the walnut crotch box. I'll lay out the cuts and parts so that I don't incorrectly cut any of these. I'll make a cut on each end and then I'll use a stop block to cut the other end to the final length. I'll then cut grooves for the top and bottom. For the bottom, I've veneered a piece of walnut burl to some cherry plywood. There were some voids in the veneer that I filled with a tinted epoxy, and I used epoxy to glue the veneer to the substrate. The top of the box is going to be a solid quarter inch thick panel, so I can just plane it down to final thickness. The top and bottom can be cut to size, and on this box, I'll pre-finish the insides and the panels. I applied three coats of wipe and varnish, and once the finish was cured, the box can be assembled. Pre-finishing is especially useful in this case because the inside is inaccessible, so any squeeze-out cannot be cleaned up. With those surfaces pre-finished, the squeeze-out will just pop off later on. So there we go. There is the, uh, the box all assembled. Once the glue is all set, 
it's time to cut away the lids. On a cherry box, the top groove will turn into a rabbit for the glass. Now I can set the cases aside and begin working on the interior boxes. All the stock that I previously resawed is milled to thickness and cut to width. Each of the boxes will have a continuous grain wrap if I can keep each pair together. <laughs> I'll cross cut each pair, mark the book match faces, and then I can start cutting the bevels onto the ends. Once they're all cut, I'll again label and group them together so nothing gets mixed up. Each set is taped together and rolled up. I'll place the interior boxes into the case so all the glue sets so they maintain the same geometry as the case. Next I can add the splines to the interior boxes. On these cherry boxes I'm putting one towards the top and bottom. The walnut boxes just receive one on the top. This time I'm using the outer blade for my dado set since it cuts a square bottom. The kerf is a full eighth of an inch, so it's a bit bigger than the splines on the case, but I'm not about to clean up 108 spline curves with a chisel. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> since these are thicker, I had to make some new spline stock. The cherry boxes are getting splines from thermally modified ash, and the walnut boxes are getting cherry sapwood splines, just like their cases. To speed up the cleanup, I'll use a flush trim bit to remove the bulk of the waste and then sand and clean up the outside of the boxes. Now I can add some bottoms to these. Since they're small enough, the bottoms can be simply glued on without worrying about wood movement. To make the process easier, I stuck a bunch of them down to a long piece of quarter inch thick stock rather than trying to glue on individual bottoms. The boxes can be separated and a chamfer is added to the bottom to make the boxes look like they're floating when they're sitting on a table. Now I can take care of the glass lid. I had this old glass cabinet door that I salvaged the glass from. Cutting the glass took a bit of mental preparedness to get over the idea that I was about to break a piece of glass. <laughs> you really have to commit to the action. <laughs> Once the glass was cut to fit, it could be secured with some retainer strips. Now it's on to the hinges. This box is getting a pair of small box hinges from Horton Brasses. I'll first make the mortise in the case for them. Then I can transfer the hinge locations to the lid and cut the mating mortises there. And that's about it for the construction of the cherry box. So now back to the walnut box and it's time to get the hardware installed. On this box I'm using these wax cast stop hinges that are also from Horton Brasses. These are replicas of hinges that were handmade a long time ago, so they're an interesting contrast from the perfect machine hinges that we're used to. I'm setting the leaf into the case flush, so I'll cut that more by hand. I'll cut the mortises into the lid deeper, so the lid touches the case when closed. I'll quickly remove the bulk of the waste with the router and chisel off the walls to fit the hinge. This box is also getting a half mortise lock. I'll start stepping through the process to inlay the lock into the box so it ends up flush with the surface. Once the mortise is all set, I can drill and cut the keyhole. This lock also has a latch mechanism that gets mortised into the lid. A little bit of routing and chisel action here, and with all that hardware installed, this one is ready for finish as well. After a bit of finish prep, I can finish the boxes in the same manner as the pre-finished parts. Three coats of wiping varnish sanding between each coat with 600 grit sandpaper. The three coats leads to a nice even finish without a whole lot of build. So it maintains a more closer to the wood type of look. While the finish on the boxes is curing, 
I'll make a quick spoon for scooping the spices. I use a ball-shaped rotary file and a die grinder to carve out the bowl. Did some rough waste removal at the bandsaw and then refined the shape of the handle and the outside of the bowl with some hand tools. Now with all the finish applied, these boxes can be reassembled so I can get all the hardware back on there, get all the internal boxes back in, and then take care of the last few details on each box. The cherry box receives a latching mechanism and that just gets screwed to the face. The walnut box needs an discussion for around the keyhole, so I've chosen this round style one and that just gets pinned in place with some small nails. And just like that, these boxes are done. So I'm really happy with the way these things turned out. I really like this idea with being able to see into the box and having all these individual boxes that you can take out and store various things in. So I set these up as a spice box and a tea box, but they could be used for other things like a jewelry box or a watch box. Very versatile and multifunctional design. I had a lot of fun making these because there's a lot of little details in these small boxes and that's what I really enjoy about you know, smaller projects like this, it allows you to see and learn about those small details and then you can transfer those detail-oriented skills to your larger projects. Because on small scales like this, those details really matter and as you start bringing those details into your larger projects, those larger projects also start to show a higher level of execution. So as I mentioned, I just finished up this build over in the guild, so I have 16 instructional step-by-step -step videos that will show you how to make these boxes. We go through the design process, lumber selection, all the joinery, all the hardware installation, and we'll also take a look at making these sleds for the table saw to cut the bevels and the splines for the joinery on the case, as well as the internal boxes. So I'll leave you a link to that down in the description if you want to check that out and make your own spice box or tea box or watch box or jewelry box or whatever you have nine different varieties of that you want to store in some kind of fancy box. <laughs> so that's going to do it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the Spice Box build or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.